Hello everybody, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, have been doing Stamping Up, uh, working as a demonstrator for about 10 years now with Stampin' Up! But I've been making cards for years and years and my goal is to just simply spread Joey one card at a time. Thank you so much for taking time to join me tonight as uh, I prepare to do a live video tutorial for you. I'm just making sure I'm going live in the right spot here. And it looks like I am. All right. Um, it is Monday, March 6th, and um, we had more snow here in Minnesota again. They thought it was going to be an inch or two, and I think we ended up closer to about five inches of snow here. And it was a really wet and heavy snow, and um, really not a big deal. We can go out, we can shovel it, um, blow it with the snowblower. Um, hi, Jilly, thanks for tuning in. Unfortunately, our snowblower is not working right now, and our snowbanks are so stinking high on our driveway that it's really hard to shovel the snow up over the snowbanks anymore. Um, over the weekend, we had just hit a point where we could actually see over the, the snowbanks as we were backing out of our driveway. And that ended this morning. So we had less than, I think, 24 hours where we could actually see um, over our snowbanks when we were backing up. Oh, well. Such is life. It sounds like we may get more snow Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. So, yay, the fun doesn't end. Hi, Deb. Thanks for joining in. Um, other than that, um, we did get to watch CC on Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday. So that was a lot of fun. Um, she's just at that age where she's into everything, has figured out how to open up drawers and stuff. So she found the drawer in one of our end tables where we keep our cards. And she's very good at 52 card dump, not so great at the pickup part. But we did get her some Duplo blocks and things like that. So she's starting to have some fun and her personality is really coming out um, just with the things that she does. So that was pretty much the excitement in my world this week. Let me go ahead and... Um, Wish you all a good week and hope that your last week was good as well. I'm going to go ahead and just flip my camera over so that we can um, start working on the cards here. I am actually, excuse me as I make this transition. Oops, now you get to see my lovely ceiling. There we go. All right. Yay. All right, I think we've got it. I'm going to clear off my fancy camera stand here, which is literally three paper pumpkin boxes that my tripod sits on top of, but hey, it works. So I am going to be showing you um, one of my favorite, I like good sentiment collections. So anytime I find a stamp set that has a lot of really good sentiments in it, I'm most likely going to get it. And so today what I'm going to share with you is found on page 15 of the January to April mini catalog. And it's part of a much larger suite of products, the Fancy Floor Suite, but I've actually only purchased pieces of that. One of them is the Something Fancy Bundle, which is a set of 10... Um, orange rubber stamps, the cling stamps, and the something fancy dies. And so basically there's a die that will go out with each of these, um, that will match up with the sentiments that are in here. And um, I've seen people do some really creative ways because we see these going horizontal, but actually for some of them, if you just flip them vertical, it works really well for some sentiments too. You know, like this one is more vertical versus one of these that runs more horizontal. So make sure you're flip-flopping these things around. But I like when I have tags and labels that I can cut out real nice for some of my sentiments too. And then the other piece of the stamp set or the suite of products is the Fancy Flora Designer Series paper. You've seen me feature this a few times. Um, this is six by six designer series paper, so you get 48 sheets for each of 12 double-sided designs. And I personally do not believe that our annual or that our catalog does a great job of um, showing off our designer series paper and um, 
this is one of those that when you see it in person, it just looks a whole lot better out here. But I'm going to go through real quick um, the, the colors that these coordinate with are Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, Soft Succulent, Succulent, Balmy Blue, Orchid Oasis, which matches my sweater that I'm wearing today, and Fresh Freesia. So let me just show you uh, what these papers are. Um, they're, they look like um, paint, basically, on a... Um, Oh, the medium that you paint on. I can't think what it is. You know, the white squares. Can't think of the word right now. Doesn't matter. But front and back, really pretty. Um, just the colors. It's different color combinations, too. So it's caused me to use some colors that maybe I don't normally use together as well. Um, especially Calypso Coral and Mint Macron, which isn't even one of the colors that's listed, but it looks really nice. You'll see that in one of my card samples today. There's this beautiful one. Some of these just make great backgrounds, too. This looks like um, an abstract painting, kind of water lilies sitting on a lake to me. Whoops. This is the back side. This, I think, is my favorite sheet in this whole pack. Um, again, just because the color combination, that one I would have put together, and I think it's just lovely. That's where the soft suede comes into being. This kind of looks like cut glass, sea glass, kind of. You could do a bonfire if you cut some of these pieces out. They'd make a cool bonfire. So, anyhow, I like this paper a lot just because it's very versatile. And you can do so many things with it. I did make one project I did not like with this paper, but that's just simply my thinking on it. Um, but I think you'll see what the cards I'm going to share with you today, that there's just lots of possibility with these cards. So let me step out here with that. And I'm just going to show you a couple of the cards that I made. And then we'll go through and we'll make a card um, so that you can see how simple this is. And from there, I will show you the rest of the cards. Um, and I want, I picked these two just because I wanted to show you this card layout is great, whether you do it um, portrait or um, landscape, it doesn't really matter. And all I'm using is cardstock and designer series paper. So it's very simple and a little bit of ribbon and bling, but a very simple card to make. Um, two different layouts here in terms of direction, but also in terms of my matting. On this one, I did the standard, um, Four by five and a quarter and then three three and three quarters by um five for my designer series paper whereas on this one i did um five and three eighths by four and an eighth and then this piece is actually four by five and a quarter so just narrower um borders on that card and then um, I used the words and some of the dyes to create layers, to create just the, the word. Um, and then on the inside, I also used a couple of the stamps from that stamp set. This one I chose just to decorate with a little scrap of paper. And this is the one I was telling you about with Calypso Coral and Mint Macaron. Again, not two colors I would normally put together, but with this paper, I think it pulls everything together. Disclaimer, this is Mint Macron Ribbon, which is um, no longer available, but um, I liked, actually, not Mint Macron. What am I saying? Soft Sea Foam. Soft Sea Foam is my color. Soft Sea Foam and Calypso Coral are two that I wouldn't normally use together, and this is Soft Sea Foam Ribbon, which is still expired. So let me go ahead and show you how to make this card, and I am actually doing this with my favorite piece of paper and I am matting this one a little bit different again I want to be able to show you that there's multiple ways we can do this I've got some 
speck on my card, so I'm going to make sure that I'm covering that up with my inside sentiment or whatever I put on my outside here. So to start with, you're just going to take a four and a half by five and a half inch. We'll start over. Five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock scored at four and a quarter. I'm using soft suede on mine. And then I've got two pieces of crumb cake. One of these measures um, the four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And the other piece I'm going to use on the inside for writing on. And that one actually I did cut to match the front. So both of these are four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I've got a piece of evening evergreen. And this piece measures four by five and a quarter. Keep in mind, evening evergreen is one of the current ink colors that will be leaving us when we end this catalog year. So if there are any products that you want, whether it's ribbon, ink, ink reinker, cardstock, that sort of thing in this color or soft succulent, pale papaya, polished pink, or fresh freesia, I recommend highly that you order those, um, whether it's with your current demonstrator or me if you don't have a demonstrator. I would hate for you to not be able to get those. Um, and they will go out fast. These colors have been very popular. I'm going to bring up my stamp and trimmer then because I do need to cut down this piece of paper to fit on the front of here. Now, because this is four by um, five and a quarter, and I want to stick with my eighth inch margins, I am going to cut this piece three and seven eighths inches. And I want to cover mostly the flowers here. So it's going to be 3 and 7 eighths inches wide. And then my height is going to be 5 and an eighth. And again, I want to actually have a little bit of this white space at the top. So I am going to cut down from the bottom of my paper this time. Um, just because I want to have a little bit of a the, the white at the top. And then I am going to cut a piece of cardstock or of um, designer series paper here that is approximately three quarters of an inch wide. I want to be able to put this on the inside of my card. That is not three quarters of an inch wide. There we go, Carol. <clears throat> and it will be five and three eighths because that was how long I made that inside piece. I'm having problems getting my hand to hold still to line it up. All right. And that way I'm not wasting a whole lot. And I'm going to keep this piece because I can use that on the inside of a card or something too. And we've got that for a piece. I don't want to throw out a lot of this, but I also... Um, want to make sure I'm getting the parts of it that I want. <clears throat> so, um, the other piece that I did this ahead of time is I did stamp this with the Evening Evergreen using the With Deepest Sympathy. And tonight I'm going to be using the um, Open Weave Ribbon in Evening Evergreen as well as part of this card. So, to assemble, it's very simple. I'm not going to put anything on the inside of this card because I want to be able to write a note to the recipient of it. So I'm just going to add adhesive. Remember, a light touch in that check mark will prevent it from gumming up most of the time. It won't give you 100%. But for me, it makes a huge difference if I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there. So I'm just centering that, and that takes care of that piece. Um, really, to make this card, we're just layering layer upon layer upon layer. And so here, I will center this. Sometimes when I'm doing these really narrow margins, I find that it helps me to open my card up and see where the score line is as well um, in terms of centering it. And you're going to notice that I do have the um, 
copyright for stamping up on here that's in case I ever saw one of these cards I find it easier to do that right when I'm making the cards I just put it right on the back um, I am using the limited edition stamp set which is in the annual catalog and I've just chosen this one today and usually what I will do is just stamp it in the same color as the card base and not spend too much time thinking about what I'm doing the next card layer that I'm going to put on here see now I'm pressing a little harder is the evening evergreen and again that is going to just be centered inside this piece of crumb, crumb cake and I'm choosing to do these layers just because um, I think it makes the design and the this paper pop out a little bit more you can do one layer you can do no layers if you want to just do the whole um, designer series paper on the front but I personally liked it better this way. But that's the nice thing about making cards is you can do it however you like. So let me just get a little fuzzy on the corner there. I'm going to set that in there. And then let's real quick finish up the inside of the card too so that I can add that piece and I know normally I will use very vanilla or the basic white for the inside of my card and sometimes I go on kicks too where if I have a lighter color that I'm using I'll use that for the inside part as long as the ink will still show up if somebody writes a note on it um, I don't think you have to stick to any one you know, I don't think you always have to have basic white or um, very vanilla for the inside. It just has to be light enough that it can be red. Sometimes it's kind of a nice little surprise to, uh, this was hanging off the edge a little bit. Sometimes it's a nice little surprise just to see the color in there too. Granted, crumb cake isn't the most exciting, bright, bold color, but there's a lot of our color families that you can do that with. And then... The last thing that I need to do is add my ribbon. And on a few of my cards, I've just kind of done the, the whole loop it back and forth kind of thing. On this card, I think I'm actually going to just tie a bow. Maybe. Sometimes I can do these really well. And sometimes I can't. And when I get really stuck, I have a bow maker my dad made for me years ago that helps me make my bows. All right. So we'll trim the tail, trim the tail. Tighten that up just a little bit. You can't see anything I'm doing to make that bow. The struggle was real, you guys. The struggle was real. Sorry I didn't have that on camera. I think part of my problem is I've got a little bit of sticky adhesive on a finger and stuff is getting caught on it. Not sure where that's coming from. All right, and then I'm just going to grab a glue dot here and press my little bow down. So it's got a glue dot on the back, but I think first I need to figure out, I think I'm just going to put my sympathy down here. And you can tell I'm using up the scraps of my um, dimensionals. I don't really let any of those go to waste. So you might as well see the the down and dirty of what I do. Um, I just snip the edges into little pieces and um, use up. By the time I'm done with my dimensionals, my paper won't have anything on it. It won't have any borders. It won't have any dimensionals. Just a lot of cut marks. I don't like anything to go to waste here. All right, get rid of that ribbon. And 
we'll add a bow here. And then I've got these um, champagne rhinestones. You think of champagne, you kind of think of pink, but these are really cool because they just sort of pick up whatever colors around them. And so I'm going to put a few of these on this card as well. And my take your pick tool seems to be working very good today. That's always nice to see. And I'm just randomly placing a couple pieces of bling out here. And that finishes that card. That's how simple these cards are to make because you're just layering squares. They're easy to prep. They're easy to put together. Um, you're just layering squares of this gorgeous designer series paper. You don't have to do a lot to make this card fancy because this paper speaks for itself. So I've already shown you the um, one here that's made out of Starry Sky. The other layer is um, Calypso Coral. And then I use that fun metallic ribbon. And it's a thank you card. And then this one I used Soft Sea Foam with Calypso Coral. And it's using the same stamp, but I cut out um, with the dies. You get two different sizes of, well, actually three different sizes of this shape. So I used the first, the two smallest ones so that I could layer that up. Just a little bit of ribbon behind it. Here, these two are the same size. I just used basic white. And then here is a fun birthday card that I made. Um, always trying to find masculine cards that I can make. And to me, this paper is very good for a masculine card. And it's paired with Evening Evergreen and um, Daffodil Delight. And then I did, because I, I wanted a little bit of pop on the card, I did use some of the, um, what are they called? They're the glossy dots from the annual catalog. It's just the set right here. So I just threw the yellow on there. Um, I think because of the color and the fact that they're more iridescent rather than sparkly, work while well still on a masculine card. And I've just got a little loop of uh, white twine behind that. And to get this yellow layer, I used this die. Um, that's what the white is die cut with. And then I used it also on a piece of Daffodil Delight paper. And then I just cut it in half and I staggered it behind. So it just pops out that sentiment a little bit. And then on the inside, I didn't put anything because the one sentiment in this card is, um, or in the stamp set rather, it's for when you forget a birthday and have to send a card out late. Um, I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching out the celebration. I'm using that birthday card kit organizer and working really hard to get my cards out on time. So I'm hoping I don't often have to go back to that stamp set or that particular stamp. But I do have a couple cards if I forget somebody's birthday. And then last but not least, I was able to make a wedding card. Um, this is using the Orchid Oasis as the card base, and then um, the Starry Sky is kind of my background accent piece to pull the color out. And then I used a bit of that organdy glitter, I think it's organdy glitter ribbon, glittered organdy ribbon, and the tag from this set along with this little piece to get the punch out in the middle there. You can just kind of snug these up into those curves and it'll cut out that shape for you. And um, I've used a couple of the iridescent rhinestones on this card. So here's to beautiful beginnings and happily ever afters. Congratulations. So this is going to be a wedding card for me. So with this um, paper, I was able to make a birthday card, a wedding card, a thank you card. And I just happen to have two sympathy cards. Um, this was actually being made as part of a, a Thursday night thing. Somebody was asking how to make the card <laughs> in something else I was doing. So I was able to quick, here, let me show you. And so um, that's kind of where that one came about because it was quick and easy to throw together. So I hope that this inspires you. Um, if not to get this beautiful Fancy Flora designer series paper, perhaps to give this layout a try. Um, it works really well with any of the designer series paper, but I like the kind of 
more generic where I can pick and choose the pieces too. But it would also work real nicely with any of our papers, you know, where it's you can cut it down the middle. I don't know if I have any that aren't cut, but um, you know, using this one, you could also do a layered card using this paper too. So take a look at your stash, see what you've got. Um, I think you can make these quick, simple cards great if you need something specific that you don't have. Um, and again, I just layered either using the standard four by five and a quarter, or I started it um, using the four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and then worked it up by eighth of an inch rather than the quarter inch. You can kind of do whatever you want, combine both of them. Um, totally up to you. So I hope you enjoyed these cards. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Oh, but before I go, I do want to make people aware of the fact that um, Stamping Up has started some exclusive online products. And what that means is these products are only available online. Um, they have a gorgeous suite of products. Um, designer series paper stamps. Uh, die cuts, you know, the typical suite that you see from us. But then they also have other kind of individual or standalone thing. Um, they do have one that's a combination of three embossing folders, which I haven't ordered yet, but I'm going to. But one of the other really exciting things that has come back out, I'm going to go show you here. are some of the circle punches and I'm so excited these retired um, you can tell mine are retired because I got ours on them but no way was I gonna get rid of my circle punches and now these two are back it's the two inch and the one and three quarters inch are back as exclusive online things so the only way you can order these is online um, any of the exclusively online products can only be ordered online um, they won't appear in a catalog. When they're gone, they're gone. Um, but if you've been looking for circle punches and have been disappointed that we haven't had them, I can at least get you connected back up with a two inch and a one and three quarters inch circle punch. And again, this is, while supplies last, they may or may not be replenished. We never know for sure. But I was excited to see these come back because sometimes it's just easier to grab your circle punch. So make sure you check those out, and I will see you guys all next week. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.